Hopefully you've already checked out part one of the weekly Facebook Q&A. If you haven't, make sure you do so, but maybe after you watch this here, part two. All right, let's get started. Alfredo Andres Regalado, do you think WrestleMania 31 will be worse than WrestleMania 9? Oh, God. I said WrestleMania 31 would be forgettable and be a bad show, maybe on par with 27, but going to 9, that's an entirely different level, man. WrestleMania 9 was WrestleMania 9. That shit was brutal. That shit was bad. That shit was dumb. No, it's not on that level, I don't think. Tomas Adams, how much would you pay to see a great colleague versus Giant Gonzalez in a bouncy castle match? I'd pay a lot of money to see that now since Giant Gonzalez is dead. I'd pay quite a bit of money to see how that would transpire in a bouncy house match. <laughs> also, if you had the choice to experience any WrestleMania moment, uh, what would you choose? Hogan body slamming Andre WrestleMania 3. Gotta be the one for me. Kenny Sanchez Newman, with WWE releasing a Flintstones and WWE crossover, do you think that John Cena will job clear, cleanly to uh, Fred Flintstone? <laughs> John Cena does not simply put people over clean. <laughs> Most certainly isn't doing it in cartoon fashion either. Peter Gunn, have you ever watched The Daily Show and did you ever like it? I've always been a fan of Jon Stewart. Um, I won't say I was a religious watcher of the show, but I would always keep tabs on different outtakes or segments of things that Stewart would talk about over the years. Um, so I've always been a fan of him and his work. Mario, the King of Hearts, El Semi. Do you think we'll be getting a casket match between Undertaker and Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania 31? Um, yes, I think that's probably where they're going. And then you just bury the whole concept of this feud in that fucking coffin, if you ask me. But I think that's where they're going with it. It seems like they're going with it. Thomas Bauer, if WWE and TNA ever did a crossover pay-per-view, what do you think of, what would you do for a main event match? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Well, I'll humor you. I will humor you. Ah, let's do like Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. Just piss everybody off. Sean Anderson, do you think WrestleMania 31 will end with the main event winner, uh, probably WWE title match, celebrating? Or would there be a twist, i.e. Rollins cashing in? I think it's 50-50. I still hold out hope that that's what would happen. I, I still think that's the direction that they need to go in without Reigns actually winning. Um, that's the one main event solution I came up with a while ago, and that's the one main event solution I would stick with. Um, you know, Reigns celebrating over Lesnar. The WWE would really have to sabotage Lesnar heading into this. They'd have to make sure that news was released and leaked and spread that Lesnar was done after WrestleMania with the hopes that the crowd would turn on Lesnar and cheer Reigns, which I don't even think is a guarantee that that would happen. Uh, Billy Boudreaux, what are your thoughts on the reports of Samoa Joe signing a WWE contract? Whatever. It's whatever. I don't know why they'd be bringing in Samoa Joe into the fold. <clears throat> I don't see where he's a fit for WWE. I don't see where a Vince McMahon or a Kevin Dunn is ever going to want to do anything with Samoa Joe. So, no, I don't get it. I can imagine Kevin Dunn taking one look at him and be like, him reminds me of one of them crappy indie wrestler chaps. What do you think, Vince? Oh, I tell you what. You know what I see him in? I see him in a tutu! That was exactly what I was thinking, Ben. My god, you're glorious. Do you have any carrots? I, I just don't see it. I mean, Vince will still be running the show in a few years, so as a result, uh, you really think he's going to do anything with Samoa Joe? You think he's going to get Samoa Joe? think he's going to understand Samoa Joe? You think he's going to be willing to push Samoa Joe? I don't think so. Uh, Chris Wasson, fuck, Mary kill. Christy, Hemi, Eva Marie... Or Don Marie. Um, probably put it right in Christy Hemi's butthole. I definitely married Don Marie, and I don't have any use for Eva Marie. Um, let's see here. Chris Wasson. I'm hearing rumors Curtis Axel will defeat Rusev on Monday with help from Cena. Your thoughts? Who <laughs> the fuck started those rumors? <laughs> and if the WWE did that shit. <laughs> then they deserve their 
fucking shit they get. Oh, God. At least I can say this. If Curtis Axel beat Rusev, at least it wouldn't have been John Cena that ended the Rusev streak. That could be something. But it would also be stupid. Sam Taft. Will Big Show be babyface by SummerSlam? I hope he's gone face by SummerSlam, but probably. Michael Vastin, do you think God was taking a shot at you personally when he says the kids on the internet think that they know the ins and outs of the business when in fact they don't? Oh, I'm sure he was taking a shot at all the internet people. Well, I'll say this is that the people in the wrestling business seem to not understand the ins and outs of the fucking business. This is one of those ridiculous notions is that you have to know the ins and outs to understand whether something sucks or makes any fucking sense or not. You don't need to know the technical schematics of how an iPhone 6 is put together to know whether or not you fucking like it or not. I find it funny and convenient, too, that so many of these wrestlers and people in the business that bitch about things like airlines and the like, for example, bitch about them, but they've never worked for the airlines. They don't understand the ins and outs of the fucking airlines, but yet they have no problem going on Twitter and bitching all about the airlines and how they lost their fucking luggage and their service is terrible. Oh, but wait, I thought you had to understand all the inner workings and the ins and outs of it, that you can't really have an opinion about it unless you did it before. Exactly. The stupidity and the fucking hypocrisy of the idiots involved with professional wrestling, period. Bunch of butthurt fucking babies if there ever have been one. You know, maybe, just maybe, here's a thought for Triple H and all the others that want to come at somebody like me with that type of bullshit. You know, maybe if you were better at your fucking job, and maybe if you were better at what you did, then maybe you wouldn't have to hear so much bullshit from idiots like me. Did you ever think about that? Instead of blaming the people, blame your fucking self. Look in the fucking mirror. Ask what you can do to be better. Because clearly you can fucking be better. And a whole, whole lot better. George Robinson... Who executes their submission finisher the worst? John Cena, The Rock, or Sting? Um, mid fifty Sting is pretty bad. Uh, the Rock was always questionable with his um, sharpshooter. Uh, but, man, you got to go with Cena. That STF looks terrible. And he doesn't have age or injuries as an excuse. He's just never fucking learned how to apply the submission finishing maneuver. It looks like shit. It looks like shit. It's by far the worst for my money. New Mosaic, what is your opinion on AJ Styles? Is he one of the most athletic professional wrestlers doing flips and other, excuse me, other tour de force moves? Um, I mean, he's a very athletic guy. Always been able to do some incredible things. Um, you know, I've always been a fan of his. But, you know, I'm not a fan of him breaking people's necks on the fucking indie scene either. I'm just saying. Uh, James Kempster, what do you think the WWE – when do you think the WWE will pull the trigger on Cena versus Reigns? Um, it sounds like a SummerSlam main event to me or maybe a WrestleMania 32 main event. Uh, it's main eventing a big four pay-per-view, I would think. I can't possibly be that stupid to not do it at some point. Or furthermore, not do it on, at a big pay-per-view, you would think. You would think. I'll be sure con. I haven't watched WWE in almost a year. Am I missing out on a lot? What am I missing out on in the grand scheme of things? Uh, just watch my reviews. Watch other people's reviews. Catch up on the highlights once in a while. You ain't missing much. You're really not. Don't let anybody tell you you're missing a whole lot. You most certainly aren't on this road to WrestleMania 31. I assure you. You'll be just fine. You're surviving without it. You'll do just fine without it. Keep it up. I applaud you for it. Jason Devereaux, what are your honest... Opinions on WCW 2000 um, or the Russo era of WCW in general and the Alliance Invasion storyline of 2001. And please, by all means, don't hold back things. Well, Jason Devereaux, do you, do you really know me to ever hold back? Um, I think we've talked at great nauseum on this channel about my thoughts about the ridiculous stupidity that was the invasion angle of 2001. I've talked about how it's somewhat a generational thing in terms of your perspective about it, but it was a drizzling shit. We had waited over a fucking decade for this shit, and that was the shit that they gave us. What an abortion, what a fucking joke. As far as WCW 2000, I was still actually watching it at the time as well, and I can never figure out for the life of me why. Maybe I was just uh, hoping and praying it was going to be something. It was terrible. It was, it was brutally god-awful bad. I mean, it was just bad. It was terrible. Like, even worse than Hogan Bischoff 2010, early 2011 TNA terrible. It was that terrible. It was bad. 
Javon Mallet, what's worse, another season with Rex Grossman as a Bears QB or listening to a colleague in Reigns battling promo? Well, if Grossman was ever the fucking starter quarterback again, that would be by far worse. Jared Anthony Simmons, if Triple H and Sting were both involved in the invasion angle, would we even be having this match at WrestleMania? Probably not. Probably not. Can you imagine an invasion angle that all actually involved one of the real faces of WCW and Sting? My God, that might have actually, oh, I don't know, been interesting, compelling, and draw fucking money. Brian Simmons, am I the only one who thinks WrestleMania 2000 is underrated? Um, I'm going to stop reading the question right there. Yes, I believe firmly that, yes, you are the only one that believes that WrestleMania 2000 is underrated. I think. I hope. Benedict Infinity Ward, what can WWE do to make Wade Barrett seem as a credible threat from now until WrestleMania? Have him win a match! Aaron O'Brien, do you think the build-up to Wyatt versus Taker will at least be good? No! Hard to build it up if Taker ain't gonna fucking be there. Furthermore, knowing that it's heading to a lose-lose match at WrestleMania, which has no guarantee of being any fucking good whatsoever, I'm tremendously concerned. And no, I don't think it'll be good. And it hasn't been so far. Why it's doing good work, but that doesn't mean the build-up to it's been good. Galen Crippen. Hey, Galen, what's going on, man? If you had to pick one current, relatively new WWE wrestler to be the guy for the new generation, who would it be? Um, I don't know that I would pick one guy. I don't know why it always has to be one guy. I'd be looking at a series of guys, and I'd want to find something for everybody. So, yes, Roman Reigns would be involved, but so would Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Daniel Bryan could be there as a little bit of a sage or, you know, kind of veteran voice. Um, and even Randy Orton to a degree, because Randy Orton's still not that old. But I'd really be building the company around Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose and Bray Wyatt and guys like Cody Rhodes, guys like the Usos, guys like Big E. All these guys that are under 30 years of age. That's who I'd be building the company around. I'd want to invest in them now because I know I can get some return and gains out of them now, but I can really get some return and gains out of them long term. Those are the guys that I'm building the company around in my mind. Doesn't have to be one top guy. Uh, Eric Rivera Cuevas. If, you, if WWE is trying to condition the fans to accept a lower quality of wrestling, wrestler and wrestling. Oh, are they? Oh, yeah. I think they are. They know. They can't be that stupid. Like, what they can't be. So, you know what? I don't even fucking know. That's what they're trying to do, though. I don't know if they realize they're doing it or not. Um, Terrence Young, what do you think of Kazarni, and do you think his gimmick would work today since it didn't work in 2009? No, it was dumb then for WWE, and it's dumb now. Uh, Muhammad Asil Meki, what was the last WWE show you really entirely enjoyed? I mean... <clears throat> Hmm. 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 Maybe SummerSlam or Survivor Series of 2002? Like, completely thoroughly enjoyed? Might be one of those. It really might be that far back. It really might be. Uh, John McSill, do you think Brie Bella should be worried because Daniel Bryan is turning into he who shall not be named? Why is he turning into he who shall not be named? Come on, man. Don't be comparing Daniel Bryan to a fucking child and woman killer, seriously. Drew Johnston closes us off. Will you be watching Alex Riley's Return to the Ring next Wednesday? Yes! I most certainly am. C.J. Parker, you're going to get yours, brother! Stupid gimmick. Anyways, thanks to you guys that submitted all of your questions for part two of this weekly Facebook Q&A. I do appreciate it. Now, for me, I'm going to go back and watch all of this week's NXT episodes so I can watch Alex Riley in all of his glory. Goodbye.